now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. I am Derek Hunter sitting in for him with Patrice on WUCA coming up with the bottom of this hour. We got Jonathan Butcher, the Heritage Foundation, talking about education. One hour from now, the great one, Mark Levin, on uh, tackling and defeating Target already. 24 hours, Target caved. It's the power of the boycott. And Brett Baer joins us at 835. But right now, the uh, Real Clear Politics, White House correspondent, reporter extraordinaire, and lover of Chris Stegall, it is <laughs> Phil Wegman joining us. How are you doing, Phil? Oh, man, I thought you guys would have forgotten about that by now. No way. <laughs> Chris Chris is sending texts. He wants to make sure that you're – did you get his card? I don't know what that means, but uh, – uh, no. um, Phil, you, you hang around the White House a lot there for Real Clear Politics. I assume you leave all of your illicit drugs at home or at least in the car when you go to work. <laughs> but somebody brought the booger sugar with them, and uh, they found cocaine in the White House. Now, last time I knew that cocaine was in the White House was during the first Bush administration when George W. H. W. Bush held up a bag of crack saying it was just purchased in Lafayette Square, trying to draw attention to the crack epidemic. We knew where that came from. Do you think there's a possibility we'll never know where this bag of powdered Coke came from, officially? There's reporting that Secret Service doesn't think that they're going to be able to figure out who brought the cocaine into the White House. And that boggles the mind, because this is the White House where every guest has to sign in uh they Mm -hmm. have to send in um a clearance check uh several days in advance Mm -hmm. there are cameras everywhere uh secret service guards are everywhere um but from the early reporting that we have uh heard secret service is having a hard time pulling uh, identifying information off of uh the bag of cocaine in question And also, Secret Service thinks that because of where the cocaine was found and because it was near an area where there was so much foot traffic that they would have a hard time uh, tracking down just exactly who brought the cocaine into the White House, which is just such a crazy thing. It's under surveillance, right? They could go through Mm -hmm. and say, well, there are 12 people who walked in through this corridor or wherever it seems to have moved from 15 different places so far so who knows where it will end up actually having happened but Mm -hmm. you can see who was in the general area at that time Mm -hmm. and from there you can draw certain conclusions and maybe have interviews and maybe a little dixie cup where somebody could urinate in it the way i the way i now of course the the popular theory is that hunter biden is, is he on surveillance footage anywhere and i always say Look, if you're on a golf course and there's two bodies decapitated, you find in the clubhouse and you find out that OJ is out on the eighth green, you probably start with him. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean he did it, but you go to the guy with the history of beheading people first in the interest of, of time. And if there's somebody with a history of drug use, you maybe start with them. But is it more a matter of the Secret Service won't be able to figure this out, do you think? Or it's the Secret Service doesn't really want to know because you can you can not get the answers to all sorts of questions if you don't ask them, if you don't really want to know the answer. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, we're left to speculate right now. And I'm telling you that I'm getting a bad taste in my mouth. I know a lot of other reporters are because mm. the story has changed. As you mentioned uh, a few moments ago, first we heard that the cocaine was found outside the White House. Then it was in a uh, highly trafficked area uh, where tourists came walking back and forth all the time. I think the last bit of reporting that I saw uh, was that it was perhaps on the same floor uh, in the White House as the Situation Room. It's difficult to pin down exactly where this was found uh, so that you can begin to um, draw up a list of Uh, you know, potential folks. But look, the real thing that is causing consternation here is the administration is not answering questions. And yesterday, I know you guys saw this, uh, Mm -hmm. but during a gaggle on Air Force One, when reporters (laughs) asked basic 
who, what, when, where, and why questions. The deputy White House press secretary told reporters that he couldn't answer their questions about the cocaine in the White House, and he cited the Hatch Act. Hmm. Yes. Total. This, well, this obviously. Five up the mind. It, it does, because they must think that we're stupid. Um, they must think that you guys are stupid. And kudos for, you know, your colleagues for holding, you know, at least continuing to ask these questions. And, and I've been pleased to see that when I watch the evening news, I'm seeing this story day after day. Um, do you think that the White House just does not want to touch this because it, now it, now it brings up Hunter Biden? Not just his past drug yeah. use as a potential, but also his business dealings and the 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 um, the allegations and the scandals that surround Hunter Biden and everything he does. Is this why they're why the White House is is, is kind of almost pleading the fifth at this point? Well, I think that um, you know, look, <laughs> I don't think any uh, press secretary or, or comms director anywhere prepares for how do you spin. Uh, for the day when they find <laughs> cocaine uh, at the workplace. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into their headspace, but look, when answers aren't uh, forthright, when they aren't quick, uh, people are left to speculate. Mm -hmm. And there is a very good chance that uh, this doesn't belong to the president's son at all. There's a very good chance that he's not at all yes. involved. But mm -hmm. the president's son has been very vocal and very honest about his struggles with addiction in the past. It's in his autobiography that he published himself. And uh, some of these incomplete answers that we've gotten, that's, that's going to leave the public to, to speculate. And, um, you know, there are some complaints, <laughs> I'm sure you all know uh, already, that, um, you know, some feel that the president's son is treated differently uh, <laughs> than just a regular person when it comes to you know, either his taxes or the way that he fills out uh, – uh, background checks for firearms. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's some on the right who say, well, the cocaine is no different. We're talking to Phil Wegman of Real Clear Politics. Now, Phil, I'm curious, this is more of a question about your colleagues, and I don't want to get you in trouble, so answer how you see fit. But a couple of weeks ago, when Hunter Biden did cut the plea deal, pretty sweetheart deal, avoiding jail time for not paying taxes, which I've been paying him every year like a sucker. Um, <laughs> there was a, a day, a Friday, where there was a sustained effort to try and get Corinne Jean-Pierre to weigh in on, to answer some questions about, you know, the president says he never talked to him about his overseas business or his businesses at all. That seems impossible. What do you think about it? And they, by Monday, that pressure had stopped. There have been questions mm -hmm. this week about this cocaine being found in the White House. It's a news story. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if you and one or two of your other colleagues who she barely calls on because she's afraid to call on don't ask those questions. But if it is a sustained effort by the entirety of the press corps, then you put pressure on the White House to answer these questions or at least address them, address them more seriously. Which do you – will this still be a story? If we don't have an answer by – Saturday or Sunday, will this still be a story on Monday that the press is asking about, or do you think they'll do what they've done in the past, go, well, we checked that box, we're moving on? So this just seems in a completely different category um, than tax fraud or, um, you know, gun charges. I think that this one is so unique that it is inescapable. And, um, you know, earlier this week, you had reporters who were asking the press secretary um, when she gave some of her uh, non-answers. They were asking, well, can you explain why you can't explain more? And I don't think that this one is going to be so easily set aside. Um, this, is, this is something that, you know, is going to um, dog the administration until they come clean. Uh, mm -hmm. Look, I, I think that the general standard playbook uh, that this administration has had when it comes to the president's son is, is you know, not going to necessarily apply here uh, because previously, you know, whether it was questions about his business dealings or his art or you know, some of the charges against him, um, Jen Psaki or Karine Jean-Pierre, they would say, well, this is a private individual. Um, you, know, mm -hmm. you need to ask him. Uh, this is not really germane to, you know, the White House. 
Well, mm-hmm. here, um, it's almost like they are unable to go that route um, because, again, <laughs> we don't know who brought this illicit substance. Yeah, this is this was the in the White House. This was in the official. Yeah. It wasn't even in the residence. It was in the official work area, the West Wing there. Phil Wegman, a real clear politics lover of Chris Stegall. <laughs> We're never going to let that go. No. Never going to let that go. Uh, thanks so much for your time today. Get thank to the you, bottom. Phil. Keep the pressure. Hey, up. thank you.